Hi guys, it's me, Rosanna from Wild and Bell, and today's video is going to be on frequently asked questions as a beauty therapist. I have been doing beauty and massage for eight years in both salons and spas, uh, which are quite different, but these questions are a combination of working in both. And I thought I would do it just because some of the questions people might be a bit too shy or embarrassed to ask, uh, but might really want to know the answers. And the other questions are just ones that come up all the time and I thought I might just put it out there so people can learn something and hopefully um, it might help them. So I'm just going to dive straight in with the questions. I've got them all on my laptop here. Um, and I would say this is the most frequently asked one that I've had in my experience as a beauty therapist. And to be honest, it was one of the first questions I asked when I was training in waxing. The first question is, can I have a wax when I'm on my period? Short answer is yes. I know a few people might be a bit grossed out by that, but when you're training, you do get told that you can perform a wax on when somebody's on their period. You know, a period's not an illness. You're not gonna kill somebody if you wax them at the same time. Um, so it's, it's totally fine. And I'm, as a therapist, I have experience waxing people when they're on their period. What you would have to do is put tampon in, not use a pad and we would just move the string and wax around and get on with it and it's not a big issue. I think the long answer to this question though is would you want to have a wax, especially something like a Hollywood or a Brazilian, when you're on your period? I've also done that waxing on plenty of people when they've been on their period, um, but they are, they have, I have to say they are people that are used to having waxing. If you've never had a Hollywood or Brazilian wax before, and you're thinking of having one and you come on your period, I wouldn't say that's the best experience to have it for the first time. Um, when you're on your period, all of your blood circulation is around that area and it can just be more sensitive and it's probably not very enjoyable or comfortable. Um, personally, I wouldn't do it just because it would be too painful. And just, you, I, don't, I don't feel great when I'm on my period. I feel bloated and gross and like I don't want anybody to go near me. So personally, wouldn't, wouldn't do it. But yes, you can do, you know, if you're having an emergency and you're going on holiday the next day and you're panicking like, oh my God, I'm on my period. It's absolutely fine. Just a heads up, I think maybe just once you're in the room with the beautician is just tell them that you're on your period just so they know. Second one is also waxing related. Um, I've had this asked a lot and it is, I've just had a baby, will it be okay to have a wax? Uh, short answer again is yes, it's fine. Long answer is um, if you've had a caesarean or you've had like stitches because you've torn, it might be advisable to speak to your doctor first just to check how long to wait for it to heal before somebody can go ripping skin off around there. Um, again, it's just what you're comfortable with and you wouldn't want to interrupt any like surgical stuff. Uh, with this question, I would just want to say as well, I've had like a lot of clients who have, have said to me, oh, I really want to have a wax, but I've just had a baby and I'm worried it's going to look a bit of a train wreck down there. Okay, I just need to say something straight. I have waxed so many people that have just had babies. I haven't had a baby. I have seen so many vaginas, I can't even get an estimate of how many I've seen in eight years. And honestly, there is no difference to a vagina that's had a baby and one that hasn't. I honestly, unless I'm blind, I cannot see a difference. I had one client that was so self-conscious and she was, um, you know, she was convinced that her down there was like completely ruined after having this baby. And I was expecting, to be honest, a bit of like a train wreck. And um, I couldn't even, I couldn't even see the scar from the stitches that she had. So if you have just had a baby and you're desperate to have a wax and you're feeling self-conscious, don't be. Um, what's your favorite treatment to do? I get asked this by, I would say every single new client I have asks me this. It's like, oh, where do you live? How long have you been doing it for? What's your favorite treatment to do? Uh, my favourite treatments to do are facials. I love skincare, I love making skin look good, I love facial massage, I really believe in facials, I think they really work. So I love doing facials. However, treatment wise, like when I'm running a column, I like to have a mix of treatments. I hate it when it's like facial, 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 massage, 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 or pedicure, 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 or waxing, 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 which is really weird. You do have days when it's just, you have all of the same thing, like all nails or all waxing. And I find just because I'm tall and I find it easy to, excuse me, I find it easy to fall into bad postures, doing the same thing all day just really fucks my body up. So I just, I don't like doing that. 
Um, so I do like having a mix of treatments. Also, just to keep it like different. Uh, do you like your job? Yes, I do really like my job. I think like any job, it has its pros and cons. Um, I will say that it's extremely tiring being a beautician and a hairdresser for that matter. Um, not just physically exhausting, but like it can be really mentally draining. Your job is to make people feel good all day long. And, and I think now that I've been doing it for a long enough time, I've managed to have that sort of barrier between me and the client. And I try and not let them affect me. Sometimes they do. Sometimes you get a client that is so rude and you're literally just like, I would never speak to somebody like that uh, who's doing something nice for me. But you just have to let it go. You just have to let it go. Really hard to though. Um, so yes, I really like my job. And it's also a job that you have to really like it to be able to do it for more than a year and a half. It is really draining and really tiring, but it's very rewarding. And I love beauty, I love doing beauty treatments, um, so I'm happy to do them. But like I said, it is tiring, so you have to really want to do it to be able to do it. And I think the same goes for hairdressing as well. So yes, I really like my job. And I just like chatting to people, learning about people and making them feel better about themselves. It's amazing what something as little as like an eyelash tint can do to somebody's mood. And I think that's a really positive thing. Mm. Oh my God, I've skipped like three questions. What's your favorite treatment to do? Okay, out of all of the treatments, which one should I have regularly? Um, so this is just my opinion, but I think out of all of the treatments you can have, I would say pedicures are the most important. Just because like for, you, for the health of your foot really, or feet, <laughs> assuming most people have both feet, yeah, just to have somebody check them sort of every four to six weeks, make sure that the nails are growing properly because ingrown toenails can be agony. Um, making sure the skin of the feet is good, make sure you don't have any verrucas, any corns, um, any imbalances with your feet, any infections, any fungal things. Um, so yeah, I think having pedicures are the most important just because it's good to have somebody check your feet. And all of the other treatments are more aesthetic based. Obviously massage is like, I think massage should, everyone should have massage sort of every day. But in terms of, yeah, beauty treatments, pedicures, how often should you have a facial? Again, in an ideal world, you'd have them every four to six weeks. I love doing facials because they make such a difference to your skin. The massage really helps, the products help, the application of the products, the way that we do it, the relaxation element, like facials are amazing. Um, however, I know that that's quite an expense for people. So I would say have a facial four to six weeks if you can. If you can't, maybe, I don't know, every three months, but make sure you are on it with your skincare routine and you give your skin some love at home. Um, do you like your job? Went over that one. Okay, difference between hot and strip wax. And this one's a really important one for me. I do a lot of waxing. And the salon that I work in, we're known for having hot wax, which is a really strange concept for me because when I was training for underarm and bikini line assessments, we were not allowed to pass those assessments if we used strip wax, we had to use hot wax. And the reason for that is, it's pretty obvious, like pubic hair and underarm hair is also pubic hair, is a different type of hair to the hair that you get on your arms and legs. It's a lot thicker, it's a lot coarser, it grows differently. So obviously you need to use the right wax or a different wax for that. So hot wax is a lot thicker and it melts at a higher temperature. It really grabs the hair from the root and removes it from the root. And that stops any ingrown hairs from growing. And also it means that your hair is more likely to give up growing. So for areas like underarm and bikini line, if you don't want hair there, then waxing is the best option and also um, hot waxing. So hot wax, higher temperature, um, thicker and you don't use the paper strip to remove it. It's like a thick putty, you let it set, you flick a little corner and then you rip it off. For bikini waxing and underarms, it's so much less painful than strip wax. Um, I've known people that have been really anxious about having their bikini waxing, especially because most people nowadays have Brazilian or Hollywood waxes. I've, I've had people that are like really anxious about it and then you do a hot wax Brazilian, they're like, oh my God, that wasn't even painful. So if you are thinking of having Brazilians or, or um, Hollywoods, have hot wax for it. And underarms, it's literally amazing. Also with strip wax, it's a lot thinner and although it can look like it's removed the hair, 
usually what happens with the bikini line and the underarm is it snaps the hair at the surface of the skin and it looks like the hair's gone and then over time your skin will sort of renew itself and then that little bulb of hair will get covered with new skin and then you get ingrown hair and then they can get infected and yeah it's not great strip wax also in those areas is really irritating and just more stingy and painful um so hot wax all the way where did you train so I actually started my training a bit later. Most people do it when they go off to do A-levels or GCSEs, but I did my A-levels and then I had one year out. What did I do? I finished my A-levels. I moved to London actually to do modelling and then I came back after three months because I got bored <laughs> and they told me to, you know, sort myself out and I didn't want to. So I came back and worked in Café Rouge and um, did a bit of travelling. And then in my second gap year, that's when I did my course. Um, so I actually had some money from my granddad from when he died, um, which was gonna be towards um, education. I didn't go to uni, um, so I used it for my course in beauty. And I did like a fast track course at a private college in London called the London School of Beauty and Makeup. I did it for just under a year and it was the most intense, hard, difficult thing I've ever done. Um, more difficult than my A-levels, I think, because it was just using a different part of my brain and working practically and learning how to use my hands as well. I remember the first time I did a facial, actually I did it on my friend Katie, who will remember, she was my model for my facial exam. I was like a, an absolute mess because it's just so scary, like touching people, you have no idea how to apply stuff. Now I just do it and I'm absolutely fine, but at the time it was really nerve wracking. But I'm really glad I had the training that I did because it was so strict, you know. By the end of my course, they introduced a new rule where you could only wear your hair in a bun. And I used to get sent downstairs to the tailor shop all of the time because my uh, uniform pants weren't like ironed in a particular way. You weren't allowed to leave the school without changing into your normal clothes. You had to wear white under underwear. You, get, you used to get told off if you had like a black thong on under your white uniform. It was really, really strict, but really good and gave me some like really good standards to start from, which I still keep today and I still remember certain things. So yeah, it's called the London School of Beauty and Makeup in London, obviously. <sighs> Lol at this next question. Do you do back sacks and cracks? No, I fucking don't. And I wouldn't even know where to start. Absolutely no way am I going near a guy's ball sack and waxing it, not happening. Uh, you basically have to get a guy's dick out and I'm just like not into that at work. Um, so no, I don't do back sack and cracks. I do back waxes and those are quite fun to do and chest waxes, but that area on a guy, no. It's just like asking for trouble really, isn't it? It's just awkward. Oh, this used to irritate me so much when I worked in a spa. Am I the most tense person you've massaged? I literally used to feel like saying, no, I'm the most tense person that's ever been massaged because all I do is massage people like you. Everybody's tense. We all work at, we all either work at desks or work on our feet. We're all stressed. Nobody takes good enough care of themselves. It's cold all the time in England, apart from this freak summer that we're having. Um, so yeah, you are tense, but you're not the most tense person that I've massaged. And the fact that you've just told me that has just made me want to tell you that no, you're not. Okay, what's the next one? I want my eyebrows like yours. Okay, first of all, you can't have my eyebrows because you're not me. Second of all, if you want thicker, bigger eyebrows, just don't get them waxed all of the time like you're doing. And also, have you ever heard of the quote, eyebrows are sisters, not twins? Have you looked at mine? Can you... Look at that, super arched. This one, like, super flat. They are so different. To be fair, I did a trade test on a girl the other day and she threaded them really well, so my eyebrows are looking a bit more sort of um, shaped than they usually do. But if you want sort of um, big bushy eyebrows or like fuller eyebrows, just don't wax them. You just have to be strong and not want to like pluck them or tweeze them. I've actually turned clients down before and been like, I'm not gonna do them. If you want eyebrows like mine or the next person, you just need to leave them and grow them out. Um, is your job tiring? Hmm. Is the Pope Catholic? Is your job tiring? It's like the biggest fucking understatement ever. Yes, it is really tiring. Not only is it really, really physical, uh, it's long hours, you're on your feet all of the time, you don't really get to stop, you have a lunch break, but you don't really get to sit down. Um, you're like waxing over and over again, craned over doing nails, massaging, and then obviously there's speaking to the clients, which is probably the most draining thing ever. Sometimes you get clients that are so negative and draining that you're literally like, 
why am I even speaking to you? You get clients that ignore you, you get clients that don't speak to you, you get clients that before you've even had a chance to offer them a drink are like, are you gonna offer me a drink? Literally people are so difficult sometimes, it's ridiculous. But obviously our job is to soften people and make them feel more relaxed and you know, we can all be in bad moods when we're stressed out. So I try and remember that when I'm, I wanna punch a client in the face. Um, does shellac damage your nails? This is a bit of a tricky one because I don't think it does if you have it removed properly. But then I have also removed shellac from um, other salons where it has damaged the nails because they've put it on in a different way and it's really stuck on and it's kind of peeled the nail off. I would say like shellac is fine for your nails. It's just a gel polish. It's not like a gel overlay or like an acrylic extension. Um, it's just a hardened polish. So I would say it's fine, but if you have thinner nails and you feel like shellac makes your nails a bit thinner, just give it a break and don't have it put on all of the time. Also, don't remove it yourself. Have it taken off properly. That, I would say, is the biggest um, factor in keeping your nails healthy. Mm, how long have you been doing this? I've already said that. Eight years. And I'm going to uni in two months uh, to study marketing because I would like to continue working in the beauty industry but not in salons doing the practical work. I want to combine my experience of the beauty industry with marketing, however however that may turn out. And then lol, at the last question, I have ingrown hairs, is that normal? Um, yeah, they're totally normal. Ingrown hairs happen when um, your hair gets stuck under the skin and it basically you get like a little spot or the hair continues to grow. Basically with waxing, the pro of waxing is that it thins the hair out. If you've got very thick hair and you don't want to have it, um, it will make the hair finer. The con of that is the finer hair, which doesn't show up as much, is more likely to get trapped under sort of dry skin or dead skin. So it's really important to always exfoliate, which you should be doing anyway. Um, and yeah, if you have waxing, ingrown hairs are normal. You can get um, loads of treatments now to to stop them, but they're fairly normal and quite unavoidable, to be honest. Before I was a beauty therapist, I was convinced that I would train to be a beauty therapist and find the answer to ingrown hairs, but really there isn't one. I did have one client actually, years and years ago, who told me that one summer she went abroad for three months and it was so hot and humid that she couldn't even bear to wear underwear. So she was wearing really loose clothes with no bra or knickers. And she said she did not get one ingrown hair once so maybe that's the maybe that's the secret not wearing pants um yeah so i think that's the like most commonly those are the most commonly asked questions um i'm actually going to do another video which is more more sort of um beauty based rather than like beauty therapist job based but i hope that's uh, answered some of your questions and entertained you for Five minutes, 10 minutes, 18 minutes actually. Jesus, I can talk for, talk for England. Anyway, thanks for watching as ever, bye.